Hey everybody, what is going on? It is Dunbar Snack Bar. It's time for another episode of Give Her A Go, where I take a random mission out of the Armin 3 Steam Workshop. I play it, and I rate it for you. Now, this particular mission is called Blitzkrieg, and I did some research on it. There's a, a lot of different flavors, actually, of Blitzkrieg. This one is called Random Mode, and it was created by a guy named Keiju. It's KJU. Um, anyway, this guy does a lot of good stuff. I know that you'll be seeing some more uh, stuff that kind of he has done later on. And so, uh, what you kind of saw at the beginning was a little bit of a montage. I don't really do montages, but I guess that's the closest thing to kind of describe it. I guess I'll just say clips from other uh, games of Blitzkrieg that I played prior to this. It is very different because this is not like some of the other missions. Um, actually, it's not a mission at all, uh, which is kind of what I've done in the past. You know, it's like, hey, this is just one mission and a part of a story. Here is a tank. I need to destroy it. But I'm an AT specialist, so I can't really lock on to him from here. Yeah, I shouldn't have done that. Anyway, I'm going to go just full infantry on it. Um, but basically what this is, oh, there was somebody. Pop my head out. Oh, he's facing away from me. He should be easy kill. There we go. Um, but yes, rather than a mission, this is a game mode, which is cool. Uh, something I'm actually really excited to be posting about here. Because this breaks away not only from, as I mentioned, the types of stuff that we've seen in the Steam Workshop, but just from what Arma traditionally has been. You know, Arma, one of the things that sells itself as being... Uh, is a military simulator. You know, I've done mill sims. People take this stuff very seriously. You know, but it's a sandbox uh, military simulator, which is so cool because people who are very creative get to put together some, some great missions. And, you know, I take it very seriously. And I'm a lot more strategic in this game than I am with any other type of shooter. I mean, that's just the nature of Arma. Um, but this mission, or this, this game mode here, kind of breaks away from that. This is your typical type of first person shooter gameplay you know this, this is conquest you know in in some different games but you get some really cool vehicles and, and stuff like that so there's different points that are on the map uh, alpha through juliet um, a through j that we're responsible for taking and capturing these positions um you know just by capping them like you would oh my gosh that is there i'm backing up um, and so this is designed, you know, this is the single player version. You also have multiplayer type versions of this as well that people can play as. And it's just a nice break from the, you know, Arma type of mode. Oh my gosh. There's somebody up there and I forgot there's a tank up here too. I gotta back off. Um, but yeah, so this kind of plays out like just some other games that you kind of play. And this is actually a really cool break. Like... You know, if I'm playing some of the missions in Arma, when I die, there is no respawn. It's just the mission is done and over with. Congratulations. I have to start over type of thing. Um, not with this. I mean, if I get killed here, I just respawn at a previous point. And I'll kind of show you a little bit uh, about the system here in just a bit. Right now, I'm trying to help capture uh, this position. I do have a substantial amount of members on my team. This is all AI, which is really good. And because it is like this, there's a lot more action that goes on continuously than what you see in a lot of other Arma missions because deaths really don't matter that much in this, except it just sets you back and everybody else too. Uh, some of the stuff in here too, you know, I'm, I'm running with the artillery right now. The tough thing is though is there is no artillery computer. I love getting in the various artillery pieces that are in this game. And so what I've actually had to do with this, and I'll kind of, uh, actually I don't think I have clips of it, but I actually use this as a field gun because I can't, you know, put it up in howitzer type angles or anything like that for indirect fire. I kind of use it for more direct fire situations as a field gun. So I'm only lifting up, uh, you know, the main gun by like six, seven degrees, but I'm still getting some substantial hits. It's it's super cool actually rolling around in this. Uh, you also get a chance to be able to be in some other vehicles as well. The APC, the tank. Uh, you can also get into some, uh, you know, transports, which are just basically large trucks. 
So you, you do have some vehicles that you'll be able to use. There will be some air support as well, both uh, with fixed wing and rotary type of aircraft. So, oh geez, or rotor aircraft. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's going on at once. And so I'm skipping ahead here because I'm making a break for the next point that I have to go ahead and capture. Since I've got somebody else here who is in uh, in this vehicle with me, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to get out because at this range, I don't know how effective my gun is going to be, like just the main gun on here. So I have to stay within 50 meters of the position. Hi, T100. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna hang out in this garage. Yes, I am playing as CSAT in this one. There's a lot of customization that you can do with this. You know, obviously if you're playing multiplayer, you'll get to choose this the side that you're on. Uh, but one of the things that's cool about random mode is before the mission starts, you can actually choose where the different uh, capture points on the map are going to be. And I'm pretty sure you can do it on a number of different maps too. That thing is gone. Oh, I'm glad I got out when I did. Um, and so the way that this can play out is you can basically put together an entire story if you want and that's kind of what I'm doing here like for me I'm playing this out as if we're trying to make a push to capture the main a uh, airfield on Altus and so oh, I just saw somebody and so we're, we're taking points that are going to get us there like uh, Alpha was on top of a hill it was a military base that was kind of overlooking uh, a position that would be vital for us to get to where we need to go. There we go. I got him. One shot, too. Um, you know, and then there'll be another point that we kind of have to take that overlooks it. And then, you know, this city we kind of have to get through as well. So there's a couple points in here. And so it creates a diverse uh, gameplay here when you pick where these different points are going to be. And the distance that's between them, too, can play a pretty important role in how the battle's going to play out and who has the advantage. Like, for example, you know, uh, I have to capture Alpha from my base. The enemy spawns at Bravo. If there is a, ooh, distance shot right in the head. If there is a very small distance between Bravo and Alpha where the enemy is coming from, they can reinforce that position a lot quicker than we can if our base is far away. So you get to choose the difficulty a little bit and kind of how you want to have that play out. So um, we did successfully capture Bravo. We're on our way to Charlie. We do have one hour to be able to complete all of the objectives. And there is some enemy forces. So I'm going to get behind this and try to see if I can take a few shots at them before they can hit me. Um, but yes, there's a counter at the bottom, which starts off at one hour. And uh, we have to capture all the positions before that in order to win. And so right now we're trying to uh, take Charlie and we're just about at the halfway point. Remember, there's uh, go up to Juliet, so J, which is 10. So we're not even all the way done. And thank you, Tank, for coming in to save me because I did not get any kills on that. See, this is the kind of stuff that's really cool where the AI is pretty competent uh, in this. Like, yes, they do make some mistakes, but that's okay. So I ended up getting killed after a little bit, and I decided to respawn as an AT specialist here to try to see if there's any enemy vehicles I can try and take out from up here. Don't see anybody, but you know, as far as vehicles, I just see some infantry. So I'm going to get set up here, try and take out some of these guys here as they're trying to move to reinforce Charlie. Got that diver there. Uh, there's a lot of different classes that you'll be able to choose from when you play this. There's an assault class that I actually like, and I'll show it to you uh, a little bit later on. Uh, this is one that I kind of play as as well. Uh, there's a machine gunner class, but every time I tried to load into that, uh, my AR didn't have any ammo at all. And so that was a little frustrating. I don't know if that was necessarily by design or what. Uh, one of the things, too, that I kind of noticed with this mission as I was playing it, is it's obviously, uh, you know, not the, I shouldn't say obviously, but it's not necessarily the friendliest to many mods. Like the first time, oh, I'm hit. Uh, the first time I played it, you know, I had my traditional set of mods on, which, you know, was like Blast Core and then Dragonfire Eden, because I do like having the better visuals and also the better audio to it. 
Uh, and then MCC, which is just a traditional load that I have just in case I already need something like that. But uh, it didn't play too nice with that. In fact, it just kind of stag like went stagnant at the end. Like as more enemy would die, they wouldn't come back. And so it got pretty lonely. Uh, I didn't get a chance to really talk about it, but you can see in the top right it says I was healed by. So that that's a cool feature to this too, where if you get hit, as long as you just get close to one of your own guys, they'll be able to go ahead and heal you, uh, which is absolutely important. And, and that can happen, you know, if you're playing this multiplayer with someone else, you know, you can heal other people, of course, as well. So this is a good position for me to be at. You know, this is, is a time where I really wish that I had, like, a better scope or I was running as a sniper because I haven't seen any vehicles, but there's a lot of infantry around here, and I'm just trying to hit them as best as I can. But this type of, you know, site here is not really meant for super long distance. I mean, I guess I'm pretty lucky that I got the hits that I did there. So I tried to get out of the building. I went back to my previous position. I didn't see anybody, so I'm coming back once again. Over on the right, you can see where it says Charlie 0 versus 10. That kind of lets you know who's at the point. So uh, since I am CSAT, I show up in red. NATO is blue. So I know that there are 10 uh, enemy forces, like soldiers, that are outside of vehicles because you don't count if you're in a vehicle. You can't capture while you're in a vehicle. Um, that are within 50 meters of that uh, the Charlie point. And so I'm just trying to do what I can from this position to thin down their numbers to kind of make an assault on this position. We've got some of my guys who are moving up as well. And this is a, a cool thing about this is, as I mentioned, the AI is, is fairly competent. You know, once they see, like, hey, this is the point that we need to capture, they'll automatically start heading in that direction. Of course, you'll see vehicles come in first. I mean, they are faster after all. Uh, but then infantry will just come in right after that. And so if you're playing as infantry like I am, you really do want to stay with them. Now, I just got mowed over right after that. Um, so I decided to switch to sniper, considering that there is so many enemy that were kind of over here. But helping thin them out and everything really made it so we can move up. And then we've got our you know, vehicles here as well. A tank is with us. Hopefully he'll destroy that APC. Come on. I think he got a good shot. It looks like the enemy might be coming from the same direction on the other side of that far house. It's like a little bit on over to the left. So what I'm going to do, I'm not in really a good position. We're seeing a lot of enemy vehicles now is when that previous class I was would have come in handy. But we outnumber them, so we should be able to capture this position. And still be okay it's all a matter of hiding like yes i see that nato tank over there the slammer and i don't want to be able to be killed by it so i'm going to be hugging this wall here and staying as close as i can and i don't know what that tank is waiting for because i can imagine they're seeing some of my guys they're just not firing at him i'm wondering though if he sees like a helicopter or something and that's what he's focused on like that's what he has targeted but I don't want to pop out okay so we've captured the position all you got to do is just wait there and it looks like the tank is moving oh you know what I bet his his target changed as he switched now with him dead I want to try and pick up his no nope. I'm not going to be able to get any AT weaponry off of him. That tank's busting out there pretty quick. Okay. So, I moved into some debris that was nearby. I'm finally going to get a chance to do what my class does best. I'm going to be the sniper here and try and take some guys out. Um, when you are doing this, it is very easy, or it would be easy to... Uh, spawn kill some people and so there is a um, a protection that's kind of put on everybody who who does spawn for a little bit it's called the spawn armor and so 
I might be right here and there's a tank shooting at me, but I won't get killed and that works in the other direction as well. You could get up on a hill and you could just start killing people on the other side, uh, except there is that armor that's there to prevent you from doing that. So that's kind of a nice feature to this as well that adds some difficulty. Now, I wanted to take that vehicle just to go into this house because I knew that there was some significant fire that was going on and it was uh, a pretty open area between uh, Charlie and this house. I didn't want to take the risk. So, of course, once I get up here, the direction I need to be shooting at is boarded up with windows. So it looks like there's some NATO forces over at that house. I'll set my weapon on the chair, zoom in. Should be able to hit these guys pretty easily. They're not too far away by any means. All right, there's two guys. There should be a third, I thought. Oh, okay, so here it is. Here's where I died. Um, and this shows you every single time. Now you get to choose where you spawn depending on what points on the map you have already captured. So since I got Charlie, that's where I'm gonna go ahead and go to. On the right here are the different classes that you can play as. Now it was showing all zeros because this is all AI at this point. And there's also some fire teams that you can end up joining as well, just to try and coordinate some of your efforts. And I'm sure that plays great in a uh, multiplayer setting, like just being able to have that, that there probably does a lot of good. Because in this particular uh, type of gameplay, coordinating those efforts is gonna be absolutely huge. This is very strategic. Like, it does feel more casual than a traditional armor mission, but strategy still plays such a huge role in this. So I think I disabled that tank, and here I go, I died again. Uh, that's, I think, one of the things, you know, I'm, I don't like too much is all I hear is, you know, that chanting, and I know I've died, but I don't get to see the animation, I don't get to see anything, it just happens. Um, and so it can be surprising and, and I get it. You know, if you die, you're not supposed to know. I mean, you won't know what happened to you. It'll just be you die. But, um, you know, I'd still like something in there just to be like, oh man, I died. Like just seeing me fall over dead would be kind of cool. Right, I'm falling back to Charlie. We spent a lot of time at this position. I want to see if I can get into the T100 into this tank and just kind of wreak havoc on the enemy. When I had that artillery piece not too long ago that I was in, uh, I really did a lot of damage to the enemy, but you, know, you can see right here with the thermal sights, yeah, I'm gonna be able to wreck these guys. So just using the machine gun, I'm not even using the main turret. Oh my gosh, what is that guy doing? Thank you, I got him. I was gonna say, if he got away, that'd be terrible. So just playing a support role right here, you know, not really trying to cap uh, Delta now, but if I can slow down the enemy here, or actually probably putting them to a, a stop here, prevent their movement, should allow the rest of my team to be able to move up and to capture Delta. So now I've got a vehicle that's just moving across the road, take him out with the main gun. You know, being in the gunner's position, it is cool being able to switch between the two of them. Uh, the two weapons on this tank, depending on what we're going up against. That machine gun's not centered on the crosshairs, but you know what? That's okay. I can adapt. You can see that just how often that they're reinforcing themselves. You, you do get a spawn every 15 seconds, and so they'll kind of come in chunks. But, oh, geez, that was a helicopter. You can see exactly like how many enemy that you're going up against. You're not going to just see somebody, you know, here and there. I mean, it's going to be constant contact that you're going to be uh, engaging with the enemy. So I'm getting a number of kills right here. Now they're kind of moving behind that hill. I think I got that guy. My bullet kind of went up over the hill and dropped down and hit him. There we go. I thought I was going to have to use the main gun on him. So it looks like I've got two people over at Delta now, which I didn't have a little bit ago. And it's because I'm really thinning out the enemy forces. And with uh, those explosions going off too, that kind of tells me that I've got somebody else here with a vehicle who's 
shooting the enemy too, so we should be able to stop them cold here. I decided to switch. Ah, I got it. Decided to switch back to normal sights just so you you guys can see who don't play the game that much exactly how much that this can help. There is some fog obviously in this particular mission. It's making it hard for me to see. Oh come on. Dang it. All right, I'm getting out of the tank. Man, he shot faster than I could reload. But I do have this on my back. I should be able to at least damage him. It seems like that the damage from AT weaponry doesn't do as much here as it does in game. I mean, this might have been changed and that's fine because I can imagine if you're playing multiplayer and you've got a ton of people who have this, you know, you could really spam AT at any type of uh, vehicle that kind of comes at you. So yes, it is smart, but you know, balancing that out is important. I think they did a good job. So trying to go back here to see if there was anything there wasn't. So I, I decided to just make a push to try and cap this position. There's already three of us over here and there aren't any enemy. So we've got a lot already that has been captured for this position. And I don't think the enemy is going to be able to put a stop to us before we get there. And yep, there we go with an APC coming in. We'll be just fine. Oh, I got to stay low. And he's got a, a gun on the top of that. So I'm, I'm going to stay low. Use that, this kind of depression here for cover. But now that I have Delta, everybody's kind of moving on. And I can imagine that this NATO vehicle will too. But I don't want to be shot in the back. Oh, I don't know what he's doing. So we're going to make a break for Echo. This is where, as I was talking about at the beginning, distance between the two positions are important. Up at the hill on the right, that's where Foxtrot is. And so they have to come down that hill through that factory to get to this position. So this is something where we could end up capturing it in quick succession between um, Delta and Echo. But we do have just about 11 and a half minutes left and I'm only at, you know, trying to capture E, uh, you know, and I have to get all the way up to J. So this is not going to be something I think I'm going to be able to complete. And that's totally fine. I mean, this is how I made things more difficult for me. Oh, what was that explosion? Oh, enemy tank. Their armor has just been all over the place today. But yeah, I mean, since you can customize the mission, you can customize the difficulty. I knew by me stretching this out and making it over a long distance that it was going to make it harder. I'd have to take positions really, really quick. And I have to take some risks. Um, because, though... We were so close. I mean, look at this. We've got 15 infantry that are holding this position. I mean, I laid there for quite a while um, waiting for these guys to kind of come up with me. Oh, but they're taking some fire. I think from inside the factory, two guys died at once. So we might try and make a push together with them to try and get through the factory. So we've got, what's this, 13 now? of us who are trying to push through but they're opening fire so I'm sure they already see where this person is and yeah they're not firing anymore so I'm pretty sure that they ended up killing him yep there he is all right so I'll stay with everybody we'll just try and make a put push up to Foxtrot I think if we stick together we'll be all right I don't have any ammunition for AT so I'm basically just going to be playing infantry. So I died. I switched back to sniper knowing that uh, the enemy is going to be coming from the airfield now. So Foxtrot was the last position that we would have to take. You can see with it being an elevated position, uh, it gives us good line of sight on the main objective. And we'd be able to stop anybody who's kind of coming this way. Uh, it would also provide some distance between us and the enemy just to be able to get everything that we you know, would need to be able to capture the airfield uh, intact until we actually started making the assault. So that way it wasn't like, oh, 
you know, my tank's just leaving, gets out of the area where he's protected, and then we're done. Like, it's destroyed right away. So I am the only person up here. Whatever that was on here that killed me killed everybody else, too. But you can see they're starting to come up with the minimap that's on the bottom right. And I think this is a great part of this mission, too, is being able to have that minimap to see where everybody else is. Um, you know, I've got a helicopter coming in that I can, you know, hear, but I can also see where it is on the map. I can see where my guys are. Like, they just are coming up a different direction on this hill than, than I am. And kind of see what armor's around too. Uh, you can change the zoom on it, a lot of that type of stuff too, which you know makes that mini map very, very useful in this too. So here they are. They're starting to make their assault, but we've only got 20 seconds left. Uh, that was a friendly, so I didn't want to end up shooting at him. That's obviously not, but he's trying to take some shots at uh, some of my helicopters. But I think he's being shot at by us, too. All right, so that's going to end up being this mission. So at the end, you know, like it says here, it calculates your score. It would kind of rank you depending on other people uh, that were in this, too. So that was just one uh, mission that I made. I did another one that was just completely urban. And things got really hairy. I just wanted to show this real quick because I hop in a tank. And all of the 10 points are inside of a city. And I have not been a part of so much action as I was here in such a short amount of time and be able to get through it. Like, Arma has provided some great moments for me, but this had to be one of those ones where I'm like, you know, well, one that will always stand out for me when I was playing this because I was like, oh my gosh, the enemy is literally all around me. And I'm just holding on like just trying to kill everybody like look at that tanks pushing a a vehicle for cover against you know preventing me from shooting them i i then turn the corner and i see artillery which as i mentioned can do some serious damage right there in front of me and then you know i've got to get that guy infantry's also scrolling past me or rolling past me and everything you know they're getting back behind my lines into like my assembly area like this is just nuts and I'm staying here in one position and then all of a sudden I see a tank and I remember what happened last time he got a shot off before I did this time I end up getting him but he's just sitting there waiting for me I blew him up oh my gosh I was so worried on that one Oh yeah, and then he appears out of nowhere too. Like he ended up getting around us. And so we've got constant firefights that are going on everywhere. Things are on fire. You know, this is getting insane, but in the coolest possible way. Uh, I end up getting out here. And then, you know, since I hadn't been in the tank for a little bit, I peek my head around the corner. And I see all of these enemy infantry that are here. And so, oh my gosh, it's like they never end. So just take out as many of them as I can, knowing that they have to respawn. But the distance that they have to go to get back to this position is very small. And there I go. I end up dying. So let's go ahead and get to the ratings of this. Um, mission difficulty for this one, I am going to go ahead and give it four and a half out of five stars, which is, is pretty awesome. The reason why I'm giving it such high marks on that is because you get to determine the difficulty on it as far as the overall mission uh, and things like you know you being outnumbered getting killed that doesn't matter like if you understand what this mission is and what it's supposed to be i think it is really really good uh some of the things that could be changed a little bit you know is getting a chance to be in the air too i think that would you know kind of add some more flavor to the difficulty and what you want to do so you know not too much really to to talk about there. scripting complexity four and a half out of five stars here as well this was phenomenal like a lot of the stuff 
you know, the respawns, getting to pick your units, the ability to change the locations before the mission starts uh, on this, I, I think that is just phenomenal. The only thing that stopped me from giving him five stars here was there were, you know, some issues, of course, like I was mentioning, you know, you go with the machine gun class, you have no ammunition. So there were a couple bugs that were in here, nothing that was too severe, of course, to really knock it off I because mean, it's stuff that's easily fixable. Uh, replayability factor, five stars, a perfect five stars. Uh, you can play this by yourself. You can play this with people. You can play this on different maps. You can customize how wide of an area that you need to be within to try and capture a position. There is so much that you can do with this that you're going to want to keep playing with it. Like the stuff that I had at the beginning, I, I didn't just do that for this video. Like I actually played it just to have some fun. So for me, that's awesome. Five stars. Uh, presentation factor. Three and a half out of five stars. This may seem a little low, uh, but there were some things on here that you guys didn't see. I mean, as far as like animations and all that type of stuff, like, you know, there really wasn't too much that was out of the ordinary. Uh, the time that uh, you can play this mission also changes too. And so sometimes it was very, very difficult at night to be able to see because I didn't have NVGs. And stuff like that so that kind of made it difficult to be able to to see and stuff like that so I'm not saying that it's you know bad by any means it's just you know there wasn't too much that really stood out here uh, as far as visuals and immersion and stuff like that but that's okay it's kind of what this mission is uh, the overall rating four and a half out of five stars I think this might be uh, the highest rated mission that I have done so far in this. I mean, it's just absolutely awesome. You can play this for hours like I did and just create whole different environments, different battles, things like that. Even in solo play, this is a ton of fun and it is a challenge, but I don't know. I loved it. So this is a mission I highly recommend that you guys end up getting. Remember, you can find it in the Steam Workshop. So thanks for watching, you guys. I sure do appreciate it. More of this to come later on. So make sure you guys subscribe if you have not already. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, all that great jazz. But you guys are phenomenal people. You really are. Thank you again for watching. As always, you guys, I hope you have a good one.